aircraft have just destroyed. The presence of this attack aircraft carrier has been felt half a world away from the United States. Here, in a land bordering on the China Sea, the peace and stability of a small nation is being threatened. A place and a people our country is committed to defend because we are dedicated to the idea that peace is worth preserving. Two decades of world change have brought United States carriers to a troubled area where the future of Asia is being determined. This day, this moment. In other times of crisis, in other places, the appearance of our carriers was enough to maintain peace. But this has not always been so. Let us consider our own generation and its days of crisis. In response to sudden invasion in Korea, United States carriers moved overnight to furnish close air support to our outnumbered forces. Carrier aircraft patrolled the Taiwan Straits while the nationalist Chinese forces moved the civilian population safely to Taiwan. Off the shores of Lebanon, while the Marines landed, the presence of our carriers close by and their aircraft overhead was enough to preserve stability and order in that small nation. During the crisis in the Congo, an aircraft carrier served NATO forces as a depot for jet fuel supplies. From various places on the global sea, the United States moved our naval forces into Cuban waters. Russians and Cubans, intent on establishing missile bases on our doorstep, sensed their purpose. A show of strength was sufficient to keep the peace. And so it has been that in each emergency, no matter where on the face of the globe, United States carriers have responded, each bringing a variety of weapons for any kind of war but using only what was needed to accomplish the job at hand. To be ready now, this instant, are the standing orders of America's attack carriers and of all who serve upon them. 4,500 men comprise this special purpose community. Engineers and doctors, pilots, steam fitters, postal clerks, aircraft mechanics and firemen. From captain to seaman, they make this ship run. In the old sailing ships, man was the key to power in a visible and tangible way. He trimmed the sails, manned the guns, carried the powder, boarded the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand encounter. In the carrier, man is still the key to power, but he uses more complex tools and more exotic skills. You work 14 hours a day, 20 when it's necessary, sometimes to work alone, sometimes as part of a team. There is easier work ashore, but here at least you are part of the most advanced technology of our age. Men in jobs on the flight deck are identified by color. Young men shunt million dollar aircraft about the deck, handle tons of explosives, pump millions of pounds of jet fuel into aircraft that leave and return to the deck nine or ten times a day. Mechanics in brown and green work from dawn to dawn, keeping 80 planes ready to fly and fight. Flight deck directors in yellow arrange all 80 exactly where and when needed for fixing, fueling, flying, and fighting around the clock. That should be no problem. I ought to be able to... And the greenies don't have anything. I can, I I can stick them in here or on, or on the elevator. But that's a good place for that, that floater back there. One of them. Hang on, flight. 
On this next race button, we're going to need 402, 310, and 408. 10 minutes to line, 10 minutes. Hey, Dave, you get that 409 and you get a report on Tanker yet? 409, you get a report on Tanker yet? On the heavy? How about calling them? Hey, Chief Williams? Okay, will you tell them that we'll fly 713, we'll send 737 down below. Six is down, 506 is down. To Bravo, our mission will be an escort and flak suppression, a coordinated attack composed of four A6s and eight A4Ds. Now some of the things that are, we should be ever mindful about in this escort is a good lookout, Doctor. We have all the information on the board here. All right, now we'll get into the actual attack portion of the flight. We'll be proceeding into the target on, air, on a heading of 090. The briefing flight, is anything but brief. The there is a great deal of information to impart. Just one of ten going on in ready rooms throughout the ship. Roll out and proceed on ahead, and this will be the airplane on which the others will rendezvous. Man remains, as ever, the measure. The pilots depend upon their own precise skills and just as fully on those who back them up. Because the airfield can move, and because others like it are at work in other oceans, it can deliver force or persuasion to 85% of the Earth's land area. Nowhere is there a target its aircraft cannot reach. Standing start, 20 tons of aircraft reach flying speed in two seconds flat. Every 30 seconds, another plane is sent aloft. 16 in quick succession. through the valleys and over the ridges in daylight or in the dark of night. The intruder will do this and find the target in all kinds of weather, for its radar system sees the terrain when the pilot cannot see it. The Skyhawk, small for its bomb-toting ability, sorts out two trucks from the enormity of mountain and wilderness, precisely. And as a kind of reminder that age is no reflection on the warrior, the propeller-driven Sky Raider, the workhorse fighter of Korean days, has proven adept at ground support in jungle warfare. The Phantom, fast and versatile, will climb straight up from the deck to stand off an attack or penetrate deep to inland targets.
These are the ingredients of an airborne strike. Deadly and dangerous. Daily and nightly chores for carrier aircraft. To the striking range of its aircraft is added the speed of the carrier itself. With a cruising range of 500 miles a day, it can draw into striking distance in a few hours. When peace is threatened, it can appear ready on arrival and stay for a show of strength or as a poised threat. When the danger is past, it can withdraw, taking all its self-sufficiency with it. of the carrier onboard delivery plane is a welcome sight, for it brings the mail from home, priority air freight, and occasional visitors. Within minutes, the outgoing mail will be loaded and on its way back. With this most vital supply of all, the reminder that no man is an island. Far below the flight deck, where hull and keel converge, the man-made tropics are as hot as any jungle. There is no night or day just a tungsten-lit sky full of valves and gauges. Twenty feet below the waterline, trained hands control one of the four engines that move the carrier across the sea at 30 knots. Four boilers and 4,500 men need fresh water in great quantities. Some are responsible for its quality, everyone for its conservation. The smell of fresh bread is a sort of time reference in this city where 13,000 meals are served a day. Eggs and bacon do not summon the morning for everyone. If you have pork chops or chicken as the main course, you know the day is well advanced even though you may have just risen from sleep. A fighting ship is not a democracy. It is a tool democracy uses to survive. It is, however, a community providing all the services for health and physical well-being that can be found ashore. the ship can be hot and tedious, but there is always a chance to banish time and space, to visit a world of your own choosing.
is in commotion, a part of the air you breathe. You give up your privacy to the greater aims of a nation that extols the dignity of the individual. You drop dead tired into the sack, down here where night and day are the same. You learn to ignore the violence on the roof overhead. It takes a bit of doing to work a man into this exacting system. And only responsible men can make it work. The responsibility of one man for another, of each man for the ship. And so you work and train. You reach the point where you and the ship are tuned to fight. Independence prepares to relieve a fighting ship on the line. From 50 states they come, all trained to do their job, from cooking meals to operating the most complex electronic equipment, from repairing tires to launching missiles. The materials of war come from the nation that has created this mobile, potent weapon. The contributions of agriculture, industry and research go on board. A large segment of the population has contributed its skill and its wealth to create this force. Tradition has it that bands be playing and flags be flying when fighting men put to sea. That is the framework of farewell. But this is the true language of long separation. of 4,500 men separates from the mainland, moving out upon the oceans that make islands of all our continents. But with all that is given by a people to create and sustain this expression of prestige and power, some here will give their lives. We have come 12,000 miles. The ship has crossed the equator twice. Cape Town and Madagascar and Sumatra are far behind. Other ships join up, and we arrive at Yankee Station off North Vietnam. The limited war we have come to fight is just over the horizon in rice paddy and rainforest. In the weeks to come, the carrier will launch its aircraft against targets that melt into the jungle and take advantage of the weather. culmination of all training, though it go back through all the years of a man's career, back indeed to the primal education that qualified him to be here now, when ingenuity and courage count for as much as his airplane or its weapons or the odds on survival.
on your own now, on your way to mountain and jungle, missile sites and anti-aircraft guns. A radar man in the carrier CIC tracks you all the way. Information reaches here from every part of the ship and from the Hawkeye, whose radar monitors all aircraft en route to the target and serves as the carrier's early warning system. some remote place. Yet there is anxiety here too. Sometimes it is tougher to wait than fight. Nature is a kind of natural enemy to what is proposed here. That men can find this moving postage stamp airfield. That other men can plan their approach to the deck. That men can land here. That this can be done time after time in an environment of wind and wave and weather and human fallibility. Over the years, the role of the attack carrier has been a changing one. In this period of crisis for one small nation, the force of this weapon has been unleashed. In other instances, it has not. Over the years, it has allowed the United States to respond to the unexpected, to bring this weapon to the support of friends or to confront potential enemies. The attack carrier exists so these men who fly and fight might be effective. That this can be done is the miracle of men who regard each other as shipmates and professionals. flying for weeks on end will consume tons and tons of explosives and jet fuel. Carriers on the line take brief moments to bring their food and fuel and ammunition reserves to capacity. Men are still needed to carry the powder. These great ships, some preparing for warfare, some engaged in combat, some representing our national interest in distant places, stand ready to carry American power where it is needed, when it is needed. There will soon be another mission, and then another each one reflecting the ordeal of all who serve upon the ship. Those who direct the course of the vessel, operate the radar, who plot the battle and maintain the equipment. Those who time after time rise from the deck to meet the enemy, no matter where.